Good afternoon. There is an ongoing debate in oncology as to whether a highly targeted agent or a broad spectrum drug is better. But what if you could have both? SNX is developing a novel therapy that does exactly that. I'm Steve Hall, the CEO of SNX, and since our inception, we've been focused on advancing a compound, SNX 5422, which I'll refer to simply as X2 throughout the remainder of my presentation. Based on encouraging results we've seen in patients with either neuroendocrine tumors or a specific type of lung cancer, we are poised to initiate comparative trials in both of these indications. Well, I mentioned we're developing a drug that is both highly specific and broad spectrum. How is that possible? Well, X2 inhibits a chaperone protein, HSP90, and it's involved in the conversion of newly synthesized proteins to their bioactive conformations. And tumors actually hijack this machinery to make a number of proteins that are important for tumor growth and viability. As such, specific inhibition of this single target results in a disruption of not one, but multiple signals, uh, growth signals that are important for the tumor to survive and thrive. Well, let's look at this mechanism in a bit more detail. Tumors use a number of mechanisms to survive and grow. This includes proactive processes, such as suppression of the immune system, as well as reactive processes, such as in reaction to anti-tumor medication. Through its specific inhibition of a single target, HSP90, X2 inhibits both of these processes, and as a result, inhibits not one, but multiple pathways that are absolutely critical for the tumor to survive. But how do we go about selecting the right cancers to go after? How do we select the right patients? Such as this individual who experienced a 50% reduction in their tumor size after about six months on therapy with X2. Well, we've invested to understand X2's mechanism of action at a very detailed level and have used that knowledge to design a series of rationally targeted clinical trials. And today I'd like to share with you the high level results from two of those recently completed studies. The first of those is in neuroendocrine tumors. Uh, these patients unfortunately have very few treatment options. Uh, Everolimus, an approved drug, only provided a 2% objective response rate in a recent clinical study. And there's limited ongoing work to actually develop new therapies for patients with these types of tumors. We were drawn to explore the combination of X2 with Everolimus based on a mechanistic study that suggested that these two drugs would interact synergistically to provide benefit to these patients. As shown in this waterfall plot where each bar represents an individual subject, you can see that the majority of the subjects experience a decrease in their tumor burden, leading to an objective response rate of nearly 30%. And again, compare that with a 2% on Everolimus alone. Importantly, those responses were durable, and we had two patients that actually remained on study for more than two and a half years. Well, these mechanistic studies also led us into a specific type of lung cancer. As you may know, patients whose tumors harbor one or more specific mutations have had a number of new therapies approved over the past several years. This includes targeted therapies to a specific mutation, as well as broader therapies such as checkpoint inhibitors. And it's this latter class that has shown good activity in lung cancer patients in particular in those patients whose tumors have a high mutational load. Unfortunately, the patients that lack these specific tumors, uh, the, the picture really is much bleaker. Number one, they're not eligible for these targeted therapies. And number two, checkpoint inhibitors are often ineffective in this particular subpopulation. Even those patients that initially respond to checkpoint therapy in lung cancer often relapse, so there's clearly a need to continue to develop new therapies for this uh, indication. And that has led SNX to focus on a specific combination of X2 with carboplatin and paclitaxel. In this rationally designed combination, each drug reinforces the activity of the other drug. In our clinical trial, we actually used a two-stage design, so in stage one, 
the subjects received all three drugs, X2, carboplatin, and paclitaxel. Provided that they had not advanced, they move into the second stage where they receive just one drug, namely X2. As shown in this waterfall plot, nearly 40% of the patients observed an objective response. And once again, the, these responses were durable with nearly half the patients remaining on study for 200 days, one patient actually making it out past 500 days. So what's next? Partnership. Our team has uh, collectively filed more than 35 NDAs, and uh, this team has been responsible for producing the results I've showed you on these two trials. But we're now at the stage where we're beginning to plan for registrational studies. Now is the time to engage a strategic partner um, as we, uh, based on the, the positive clinical results that we've obtained, um, as well as near-term initiation of these trials. Based on the strong intellectual property position around the globe and patient um, and, uh, and available drug product that's on hand, we're poised to work with our partner to advance this important new medication. Thank you.